So we got to send this composition clip back into Premiere Pro. And there's a couple ways that we can do this. One is we could take this skybox output composition here on the timeline, and we could go to the composition menu and just render this out. Another option is to take this dynamic linked project and place it back into Premiere Pro. I'm actually going to minimize my After Effects display, and you'll see that I've just got Premiere Pro opened in the background. And I actually created a folder called AE Comps to put everything into. And one cool thing that we could do is you can locate the Skybox output composition inside the project panel. It's going to be in an intro folder. These are the comps that were created by the script. And if I just take that one, the output comp, I can drag it into my Premiere Pro project panel. And you'll see there that now it's linking to that After Effects composition project file. So why would you do this instead of rendering it out? Well, you've got a little bit more flexibility inside of Premiere Pro. So just notice here, if I take this After Effects composition, the clip that we sent over, you can see there that the tripod has indeed been painted out and I could just drag this, I'll drag the video only, into the project and just sort of replace that existing After Effects project file. And now it's linking to the thing that I've painted out. So if I notice later on in my VR mode, when I'm working in that VR mode, that this doesn't look so great, I can always go back to it by opening this clip in the editor. So this is a right click and you can see here that I can do an edit original. So that is a control E or command E on a Mac. Now, what is the downside? Well, the downside, let me just hop out of VR video display mode, is that this is extremely render intensive as identified by the red render line. We're actually asking the computer to do quite a bit. We're actually asking it to find an After Effects project, uh, look inside that After Effects composition, and then reference the clip that has been changed inside of it. There are quite a bit of processing demands in order to do this, which might not work very well with your workflow. How will we have the best of both worlds? And what that involves is inside the After Effects project that we're in, so I'm in the 3.9 project still, what we can do is right click this and choose to render and replace. So this does a couple things. One is it's going to replace the After Effects composition with a rendered clip, right? Which means that we'll have real time playback again. And we can choose from a variety of formats. You can see here that it's going to this DNxHR HD format. Or we can also choose one of those, a QuickTime GoPro Cineform, which is also a very good codec. So we can choose one of these codecs. This is in the MXF format. And we can choose to save it next to the original media and include a series of handles with that as well in order to have the best of both worlds. And once we press OK, what's going to happen is Premiere Pro is going to analyze our project, or in fact, analyze the After Effects project. And then it's going to create this new clip on your system, and it's going to be referenced in your timeline. So you can see here now that this clip has been replaced. I can see for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's a different color to it. Number two, if you take a close look at the project panel, you'll see a new clip has been generated. Now, the best way to know that you're actually referencing a clip is to right click a clip in Premiere Pro. And I'll just show you that you can choose to reveal in Explorer this clip. So where it's been created, which was next to your After Effects projects. Now, what happens if you want to go back to After Effects to yet make another change? Well, if you right click this clip, you'll notice that there is an option to restore the unrender. This is the benefit of bringing in an After Effects composition inside of Premiere Pro versus rendering out that After Effects composition inside of After Effects. I can always go back to restore the unrendered. You can see it there linked in the timeline and I can begin to work with it. In this particular case, you can reference the After Effects composition, but then you also have that movie that you've rendered and replaced so that you can have real-time playback inside your timeline.